addendum to part seven, we'll, we'll call it part eight, I guess, maybe, um, a very important addendum, I went ahead and, uh, <laughs> as is mentioned in here, I was a trailblazer in using um, pin four to control the PWM to the laser. Now, of course, uh, this problem has been solved and solved correctly before, so let's do it the right way this time. So on the Vicious One website, you can search for uh, this article, the 2.8 uh, watt 100 laser, $100 laser upgrade for MPC and C. And while um, we're not doing this, we are uh, doing a laser that's driven by PWM. It's certainly an interesting read, and I would encourage you to read the whole thing. There's some useful information in here. But we're going to slip right down here past the construction stuff because uh, my uh, laser was purchased assembled. And we're going to continue down here <coughs> to the software. And instead of using pin 4 uh, for controlling the PWM signal, um, there's instructions in here to uh, convert the fan codes, which normally control D9, to uh, pin 44, which is another PWM co uh, P another PWM pin, and then you have some benefits when you're using M106 and or one and M107 over the M42 that I was using to change the the uh, pin four. The problem with M42 is it's not a buffered command. So on on our Marlin, um, the Commands are uh, like motion commands are buffered so that they're uh, you know performed and they're taken out of the buffer, um, and the buffer can stack up with motions there. And unfortunately, M42 doesn't go into the buffer. It's an immediately performed command. It bypasses the buffer, and therefore you may still be moving that head, and then you're telling the laser to turn on before the head's even in the position to um, in the position where you want it to start. Uh, I'll show you a picture of what happens when, when that occurs. So this will fix the problem uh, that I was having there um, by using codes, uh, these fan control codes that are put into the buffer. So let's take a look at this. <clears throat> so the laser driver requires a 5 volt TTL control signal. It's just like uh, what I have here. Um, so we're going to do the Marlin fan commands because they're better. And of course, as we determined, D9 is a 12-volt signal, so we can't use it. So this is going to be a quick firmware change to remap the fan output from D9 to pin 44. All right. So we are going to find uh, the ramps, uh, the pin ramps 13.h file is what we're going to find here in Marlin. I have Marlin open on uh, my Windows PC downstairs, and I have a VNC connection to it right here. So down here on the side, we're looking for pins. I think there's a whole section of pins. There we are. And we're looking for pins, ramps. It's alphabetized, it seems like it. <clears throat> ramps 13.h. There we go. So here we are. So let's take a look back here. Define fan pin. Let's take a look back at the code here. Let's just scroll down a little bit. Okay, it looks like maybe it's changed a little bit since then because this only includes there's nothing else in the file but uh, pins under bar ramps dot h. So let's go to pins under bar ramps dot h. Go down here. And there should be a pin for a fan. All right. So if we compare this to the code that uh, <coughs> was in here, A little bit different. It's a defined fan pin. And instead of being 
9 is deferring to this ramps D9 pin. And what we're going to do, I think, is take that ramps D9 pin and make it 44 right there. Let's take a look through here, see if there's anything else. This one here. Fan pin. I think what we're looking for is, yeah, fan pin, but it's already defined. Looks like this is going through and looking at different ramps versions here, and I think that's going to get defined as ramps D9 pin rather than this ramp, uh, this pin 4 down here. So I think we're safe to go. We'll find out in the test. <clears throat> Get a quick spin through here. I think that's going to be the right place to do it, even though it's a little bit different than the original instructions here. We're going to go ahead and do it that way, and we're going to build. And while that's building, we're going to look at a couple other things in this document. So instead of picking uh, connecting it to pin 4 where I have it currently we're going to connect it to pin 44 and here's where we can see that pin 44 is in this nice picture um, there's the LCD connector it's the second pin in close to the edge and we will verify that with a uh, multimeter to make sure that that's working correctly and these are instructions on how to do that. And this is one more important thing here. Um, when when the Ar Arduino reboots or uh, Ramps Mega reboots, I was seeing this on pin 4 that it would go high for a split second enabling the laser at reboot time. And it's very annoying. So here's a safety measure here that we can apply by putting a 10k ohm across the uh, PWM signal to ground to hold that low. <clears throat> what I suspect is probably that the uh, the pins uh, at initialization are going as input and maybe uh, allowing that to float up. So this will hold that down and we'll apply that and we'll go downstairs and we'll take a look and make sure that everything is now working correctly. Otherwise, uh, take a look through this. It's a very interesting read, educational. Uh, they talk about, uh, also talk about uh, uh, testing the current sent, uh, set, uh, uh, current uh, settings or adjusting the current settings. But uh, once again, I bought a module that was pre-configured with a, uh, a constant current board, so I'm not going to be doing any of that. Uh, maybe out of curiosity later on, it might be interesting to double check what they set it to. But, uh, let's go downstairs and let's see uh, see if this thing works. Right, we're downstairs here. I've updated the uh, the code in the uh, ramps and Arduino card, and I rewired uh, two pin. Let me find it in the camera here. Pin forty four over here. It's the second one in on the on the close uh, side there, next to the display card. Uh, certainly look it up online before you install yours. And I've added a uh, 10k resistor from uh, that signal to ground. So now I should uh, be good. I'm gonna move it out of the way a little bit here so we can see what's going on. And one nice feature of doing it this way, especially with that 10k resistor, you uh, eliminate the possibility or eliminate the flash up um, during the reboot of the Arduino. So if we turn the Arduino on. Here, No flash, looks good. Just to move that a little further away so you don't hear just the fan. So now on the control uh, here, we're going to go to prepare for flash. We're going to go to control, temperature, fan speed, and we're going to crank up the fan speed just a little bit to 24. And uh, should have turned the laser on. It did. We just can't see it back there because it's not on the board. There it is. The laser's on. 
then we'll go back to fan speed here and turn it back off again. So perfect. One more time with the power up check. Okay, so now let's plug it into the computer. Oops, lost the camera. Take these glasses off because I can't see the computer with the glasses on. And we're going to start up Pronter Face. And now I'm going to be entering some uh, M codes on Pronter Face here. I'm find them out. Place my glasses on here. So if I just say M106 comes on full, M107 should turn it off. If we do a M106 4, it should be turned on a little bit. It does. M106 S0 should also turn it off. And it's off. Perfect. Great. It's a short video this time just with those updates.